Well, thanks for joining us today. We're back with Dave Ward, who's here to show us how to use Firebug in order to learn jQuery. So Dave, why, why don't you kick us off and show us how we're gonna get started using some of these tools? Okay, well, I've got a fresh Firefox profile here with Firebug installed and the two bookmark looks we're gonna be using, jQuery Find Selector Gadget. And what I thought I would do is I would just show you how to use Firebug and these bookmarklets to you know, deface my website, add some functionality to it, you know, have a little bit of fun. And this is literally how I learned jQuery and ASP.NET Ajax, for that matter, just at the console in Firebug, you know, instead of going through Visual Studio and saving you know, your JavaScript file, reloading it, testing it, all of that, it takes 10 times longer. This is so much faster, and you can learn everything so quickly this way. So, all right, well, if we're talking about jQuery at this point, you can use the, the jQueryify um, bookmarklet in order to inject it into your page, right? That's right. I'm going to hit F12 here to open the Firebug console, and you can see there's no jQuery yet. Now, I just hit this bookmarklet, and the message pops up, saying, and it's now jQueryified. And as you can see, now we've, we've got the jQuery function there. And what it does is it's just a bookmark with a lot of JavaScript in it that loads in a script element with the latest copy of jQuery. So it's the same as if we had added the reference to the page, but we don't have to go through all the trouble of editing the page and you know, resaving it and you know, maybe publishing it to the server and, or any of that. Right, right. And, and what's cool about this is you can do this with basically any website on the web. I mean, anything in your browser, basically. Definitely. You know, if you don't like CNN and you, you want to hide some of the, the titles on CNN, you can just go there and do that. <laughs> so just give us a quick demonstration of something you might do in the console once, you ha once you're at this point. Well, basically, any functionality that you would think about writing you know, in a script file, you can test it here at the console much faster. That's what I normally use it for. I'll give you an example. Uh, for instance, making these uh, headings here on the side, the sidebar headings, uh, most popular, similar posts. Uh, you know, you've probably seen on a lot of sites how you, you see the accordion functionality where you click on the title to show and hide the, the content underneath it. Right. Well, I thought I would just walk us through doing that using jQueryFy and Selector Gadget and without uh, ever having to open a JavaScript file. Just to you know, prototype the functionality so that we could write it once and be done with it and, and not have to worry about you know, all the saving and reloading. Okay. And in Firebug, this is very useful. You, you can use the inspect element function to dive in and just click on an element and, and see in the markup you know, what actual HTML element that is, what class it has on it. You know, a lot of stuff that's really useful when you're working with jQuery, this is exactly what you need to know. Right, and it's nice that it's just this point and click, basically, and you can see up in the, the, the page itself of what it's highlighting. And that's right. You, know, you can either click this, or you can use Shift-Control-C as the hotkey. I use that probably more than any other hotkey in, the, uh, in my browser, for sure. And, what, and so, for, for instance, here... Shift-Control-C, what, what does that do? That's an inspect element. Oh, okay, it just brings it up. Right. So yeah. you can do that even if the uh, Firebug is closed. You can hit Shift-Control-C and immediately oh, okay. you know, jump in and find what you're looking for. Saves a lot of time. And again, F12 opens and closes uh, Firebug, which is also a good time saver. So anyway, see, I, I did the inspect, and I see here that the similar posts is an H3 element. And just to give you an idea of how easily you can use jQuery here after it's been jQueryified in Firebug, I can say jQuery H3 use that selector, and see there's an array of all the H3s on the page, just like that. And so, I mean, for example, and this is, you know, all of the functionality of jQuery is here. I want to hide them all. Now they're hidden. They're gone. And you can see on the sidebar there, they're, they all went away. Put them back. Now sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to figure out what selector to use. Here the H3 was pretty easy. A, I you know, made the site, and I know that's the right one. That helps. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and B, we inspected it, and we picked the first one. We got lucky. That was correct. That's not always going to be the case, of course. And that's where Selector Gadget comes in. Now, I think this is just a great tool when you're first learning jQuery. This is another bookmarklet. You can just click it. And as you see, it's going to load in this functionality. And what this gives you is a, an actual uh, GUI interface that it loads over top of the website that you're on where you can use it to build CSS selectors. As you see, I clicked that first sidebar heading, and right here, it's built a selector for me. It's using the ID 
And that's the selector I could use to, to select that one element right there. Okay. And if we look, see, that's correct. That's the ID of it, most popular. And that's, okay. that's what it gave us here. But the beauty of this is I can also click another one, and it's going to infer what I'm looking for. See, now it's, it's got these two green ones that I selected. And down here you can see it's guessing that I also want to select that. Okay. And now it's told me just to use the H3. So you can use this to, to sort of, uh, you know, find the selector that you need without even having to open the, the HTML of the page, actually. I mean, there, we could have done this without ever looking at the markup. So it's a good way to learn the selectors because, you know, jQuery selectors are just CSS selectors. This is a more general tool. It's not targeted just at jQuery, but it works beautifully with jQuery. And so how robust is that? If you start clicking on a number of different things on the page, um, have you found it to be generally pretty accurate to hit what you want? It is accurate unless you, you know, try to pick a combination that's impossible to build a selector for. And see here, uh, there's really no way to get a selector that just gets this, right. this, and this. And so it starts trying to make uh, you know, suggestions that aren't really going to work. You know, th okay. this, this is definitely not what we wanted. <laughs> And so you can just clear it and, and start over. Okay. All right. So now that we know that, I want to show you how easy it is to use Firebug to add that functionality that I was talking about, that, that slide accordion functionality. Because that's something that's built into jQuery. Uh, it's something that people don't, uh, they, they miss that often. It's one where they'll download a huge plugin to do it for them, but it's actually something that's built in. So now that we've discovered that H3 is the selector that we want, I can just use the normal jQuery selector here to, to find those, as you would do you know, any time for anything else. Okay. And to make the vertical accordion functionality, believe it or not, jQuery has this built into it. This is a basic function that you don't need a plug-in for or anything. Slide toggle is a method you can use to do that. And as you see when I hit enter here, it's going to slide toggle all of these sidebars, just like that. Okay, but now I'm the, move back the out. headers went away there. That's right, because I selected the headers themselves, but what I really want to do is slide toggle the next element after them. Okay. And I'll show you here, if I inspect element, and I look, see what I really want to do is I want to slide toggle this UL here, and, and that's easy to do as well. What I'll do is instead of slide toggling the H3, I'm going to tell jQuery I want to go to the next thing after the H3, and slide toggle that. And that's more like what I wanted. There you go. Okay. Yeah. And now I can slide them back out. So now that we figured out how to, to actually do the slide toggle on the UL like we want to, what I'm going to do is I want to attach it to the headers as a click handler. So it'll be just like you, know, you normally see on like an FAQ or something like that where you can click it to collapse it, click it to expand it. Right. Okay. You know, you know, really, really make it nice. So to do that, all I'm going to do is I'll use the same exact selector, and I'm going to attach a click handler and pass it an anonymous function. Or functional, you know, whatever. Yeah, or, or functional, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, this will be uh, F sharp instead of jQuery. <laughs> right. And so in here, I'm just going to use the exact same command, except that the only difference is going to be this refers to the element that raised the click event. So that way I can attach the, the handler one time and you know, it'll sort it all out, which one should be collapsed. Next, which refers to the UL, and then slide toggle. Now when I hit enter here, it's going to attach that handler to all the H3s, and all I have to do is click on these now, and it's going to do exactly what we wanted. And you and see, that's I, so cool. You just saved so much time going back and forth trying to figure all that stuff out. That's right. And, and really, you know, the thing that that really helps the most is more than just the time saver. You know, how many times have you been working on something, you're really getting frustrated, and you, you, you start to go down one more path, you know, in, in a certain vicinity, and you just give up. You're like, I don't think this is going to work, you know. And you, you start, you know, trying to find out how to fix it. You go Googling or whatever. And then eventually you find the answer, and it turns out that the thing you were about to try was actually going to be it. I mean, that's happened to me way <laughs> too many times. And what this does is it lets you, you know, experiment so quickly that you get to go down all those paths, and, and you're going to learn just so much, and you're gonna, you usually will find the answer if you just experiment here on the console. I think it's just invaluable to learning this. Yeah. 
Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing with us. Oh, it's my pleasure.